Hello guys, uh, my name is Chris and I'm in General Engineering 1030 and today for my uh, mechanical engineer project I will be explaining how a seatbelt works and how it is uh, mechanically engineered and how everything works with it and how you can improve it and all the safety flaws and everything that it comes with it. So for the first thing, um, this is the seatbelt. Now it has two components, it has a three point, it has the seatbelt that's connected into this car itself. It has this pivoter and it has this like the lock right here and then ultimately yes it does have this clip right here that when you touch it into the uh, actual seatbelt lock itself it locks in so then if there's any certain type of crash or certain movement the seatbelt will hopefully keep you in place so that uh, when you hit something or you need to jolt it there will be no uh, problems to the seatbelt. Now the thing about a seatbelt is that it has been in cars for a very long time and the thing is that over time that engineers have realized that there has to be new improvements to a seatbelt so that it can work functionally so that when it does work that there is no problems. Now when it first started, it just started in the early 50s, that what happened was there was just a seatbelt that went from one side of the bottom to the top. Now people realized that over time that that wasn't safe because you know if you step on the brake really hard your body just flies forward and then you hit you know hit your head on the window or you hit on the seatbelt and then like there's actually no protection that goes with a seatbelt. So over time engineers have mechanically learned how it works and over the decades it has come safer for the people to use because ultimately engineers jobs is to keep the public safe and also you know make the customer of the or the passenger of the car feel safe with it does now back after that people were complaining how you know how is this seatbelt supposed to be safe there was no airbags there was no nothing so people were getting hurt so engineers originally thought of the three-point idea which is the buck out of the bottom the clip and then the top now over time there's been improvements on a seatbelt and the seatbelt this over time evolves and becomes safer in which i will explain into uh, recent events of and how it is now from the early times back to the present of 2020. Okay, so now I'm gonna explain the first design that the engineers decided to come up with um, back in the earlier days. Now what they did is basically a seatbelt has a spiral st spring on it that that spring is connected to a rolling shaft. And now what happens is that the spring tenses as you rotate, as the shaft rotates, meaning so that when this is pulled, the shaft low key tights out and it makes it tighter for the people to connect so it's kind of hard to work. Now the weapon is connected to the shaft and automatically is, you know, it starts working when, you know, there's tents on it and when the car comes to a sudden, like, stop. Now the problem with that is that with this shaft, it's actually not very mechanically well engineered. So what happens is that when you move, yeah, it protects you, but as you can see, I'm still moving forward and I'm not really safe in my car. So if I had to stop on the brakes, ultimately, I mean, what, this isn't gonna save me that much. So then the public were complaining about that because they weren't receiving the right you know, care and safety features that the car was saying that they were offering because people would get into accidents and they wouldn't be as safe as they thought they would and as the engineers and the car manufacturers would be saying that it was. So with that first design, they decided to make a little ball and a little socket. What happens is that it's connected to the actual circuit itself to the shaft. So what happens is that when the people are moving Moving, you know there's sudden you know stops that what happens is if it's no moving normally the ball will you know slowly rotate with it so that if I need to move forward and back now what happens is that the ball what it does is that when you hunt to a sudden stop the ball will actually go into the shaft and then that lock that comes is connected to the ball will go into the widget and it'll go into the seatbelt so that there's no sudden there's no sudden movement and what happens with that is that it goes into a you know actual stop and then the people would actually you know go now the problem with that design is that even if the ball came then there would be internal injuries that with the rib cage and stuff that there would be you know internal bleeding and there would be problems so yes it's keeping you safe from the head injuries and from the you know the inertia of when you know when the car comes and stop that the people would actually stop in movement but then there would still be that internal bleeding problem and then the people were saying okay so then if i'm getting the seat belt then why am i still getting hurt at the end you know because what people want is they want to be safe as possible and they want to be in the best environment possible for a car so yes you know without that widget and the ball it does make it as not as safe but with luckily with the ball added onto it it does make it pretty safe for the people to you know actually stay inside of the seat belt so no ever time you ever know that you know 
they've thought of new improvements because technology has improved. So what happens with that now is that what you know really happens is that there's actually like a new part that's attached to the widget, which basically is a central you know center piece, and then on top of that is a third piece that goes inside the widget and that fits it, but it fits loosely. Now the problem with that is that it you know goes with the movement of the car. So you know if I'm going with the slowly, that if I could show you and I could take part of a seatbelt. I would show you personally, but with now this, I'll just show you. So basically there's a small piece like this. Now on top of that, it's a bigger piece. And on top of that, it fits into the widget. So what happens is it moves slowly and it goes with the widget. Now what happens with that sadly, is that what happens is, you know, if it goes slowly, it moves fine. But if it moves fast, that's what happens with the new device that they thought of in like the early 2000s, which is it's gonna lock into place. So then the widget, which is, you know, the actual seatbelt, the cloth material, will lock into place and then you'll stay even more safe. Now, the problem with that is that it needs an extreme amount of force that is applied to it. So what really happens is that, you know, unless you get to a really hard stop, the seatbelt, that part of the seatbelt, it's not gonna ignite, which is hard for the people because, you know, sometimes even with a small stop, you're gonna have to jolt the brakes and you're gonna have to hit them. But if it's a smaller stop, then that plate, that piece is not gonna come into play. And then what really ultimately is happening is that the people that are inside the seatbelt is not actually working. So, you know, people were complaining about that. So recently what, you know, engineers have thought of and which is the ultimate and what I think is the safest idea for the people that use seatbelts is that actually they added a metal rod and that metal rod is filled with explosives, a small type of explosives that what happens is that any type of sudden movement and hard movement, what happens is that piece ignites because, you know, with the jolt, it feels it and it ignites. And then that rod goes into the widget and it ultimately stops it so it doesn't move at all. So what happens is, you know, like if you play with your seatbelt and you move it a little bit, you know, what happens is that, you know, it moves like, like it moves with the people. Now, what happens with this is that if I move this fast, it'll stop. See, that's the rod. Then that's the explosive rod that goes into place so that I can't move so that I, I'm restricted from moving. So that's the safest idea because then at the end, the widget that's connected from the bottom to the other side of the bottom from left to right, that is in place. Now on top of that, there's that rod that I was talking about that comes here and it comes here. So with that rod, so anytime there's any sort of movement, it'll stop, it'll stop the, the seatbelt from moving ultimately so that when I move forward, my, my lower abdominals are saved. And on top of this widget, what's gonna happen is that this is gonna lock up so that my body's in a full stop. So if any type of brakes or any type of time that I need to hit the brakes, if it's a serious accident or a small one, what's gonna happen is those, all those components that I was talking about, you know, from the original design of, you know, one, two, and three, to adding the circuit of the little ball in the middle piece that's connected also to now a circuit that goes like this, ultimately they add a rod. Now that rod goes into the seatbelt and ultimately stopping the people from, you know, getting external damage. So now back to, you know, the safety features that are in it and then safety features that has happened and then shocking events. And yes, is it mechanically engineered? Now to first answer your first question, yes, this device is mechanically engineered. It's been worked on by mechanical engineers since cars were first gone with it. From the, the original seatbelt design to the pivot three, to the widget inside, to the ball locket, and then finally to that piston rod that explodes. So yes, it's been mechanically engineered and yes, it's been mechanically improved. Now, a shocking event that happened to me is yes, I was in a car accident. And what happened was, is I had to step on the brakes very hard. Now the problem with this is that when I did, I, my body did stop, but it was only the part that was connected to the seat belts. So ultimately when I shocked my neck like this, what happened is I got that whiplash effect, which I know that anyone has been to an accident or a scene is actually a very big problem with, you know, events and what happens with them. So what I was thinking, for so what I would improve to a seatbelt is that technology is so advanced these days. I mean, there's retina systems, there's touchscreens, you know, all these different things that, you know, people didn't have back in then. So I'm thinking, you know, we have all this technology, why don't we, you know, actually, you know, mechanically improve it. Now, what I would do is for my mechanical engineer, you know, improvement is I would add something that, you know, evaluates when you sit in the car or you could set up with your car when you first get it is that you tell them your height and you tell them your weight. 
Now, what I would think of that would work is because if it tells you your height, the seatbelt can adjust perfectly to exactly what your height is. So it's not too loose, it's not too tight, but on top of that, you know, it fits, fits you personally. Because obviously, there's so many different heights in the world and so many people that drive cars, so it's hard for mechanical engineers to find the exact height of a seatbelt or the exact height of what is best suitable for the driver. So I was thinking with technology, it measures your height, it figures out how tall you are, and it does. Now with the weight feature, that feature would sit with the actual seat itself that would connect to the seat belt so that when I sit down, it's like, okay, now for me personally, it'd be he's 5'7", he's 130 pounds, so we're gonna have this tightness and on the bottom, we're gonna have this weight. So if he was to step on the brake, ultimately he would stop, so my neck wouldn't move. Now I understand that's hard to explain and it's hard to like, you know, adapt to, no cars these days, but I feel like that would be the best way to improve it, just because when you add that safety feature, everyone is safe. I mean, if I'm 5'1 and 100 pounds, if I'm 6'10 and 300 pounds, you know, anyone who drives a car, they'll evaluate my weight so that mechanical engineers and car companies have to stop getting complaints about something that's, you know, too loose or too tight or it didn't fit or, you know, all these complaints. So I think that would work. So overall, what we've discussed in this video is back in the early days how it had the seatbelt from left to right only to only you know developing a top bottom and the left as that was improved people thought that that wouldn't work so they added a ball and that ball would connect and the you know the racket that's connected to the ball would stop into the widget also known as the seatbelt itself and that would stop it people complained about that so what they did is they made improvements to that by making the you know rocket the you know the piece that connects to the widget that moves slowly with it but if there's a part of movement it'll stop and ultimately present day what they've done is they've added an explosive piston that if there's any type of you know accident what would happen is that that rod would go into and ultimately stop the seatbelt from moving in general now with my improvements I would think that you know I'm just thinking about the next features you know how it would move so we've talked about all of that I am hopeful that you learned something new about seat belts and you know the overall you know mechanically how they're engineered and all the safety features that they added because honestly they have added a lot of features and I'm very proud to say that I feel like this is probably one of the best mechanical engineered devices for you know people which you know engineers work for people and, you know, if you have any questions or follow-up questions, please feel free to call me or email me. I am available and I'll try to get back to you. My name is Chris Morgan, and I hope you guys have a nice day. And please stay safe, guys, because I know that COVID is a very big event. So thank you, guys, and goodbye.